हेलो फ्रेंड्स कैसे हैं सभी लोग होप ऑल ऑफ यूर फाइन तो माई सेल्फ रतेंद्र चोपड़ा वंस अगेन विद यू ऑन बैंक जोन रीना वेलकम यू ऑल ऑन दिस न्यू सेशन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सेशन द टूडे स्पेशल इज जी ए बी पेपर थ्री एल आर ए बी लीगल एंड रेगुलेटरी एक्सपेक्ट ऑफ बैंकिंग मॉडल सी एन डी दिस इज पार्ट टू पार्ट वन वी हैव ऑलरेडी सेंड सो दीज आर हंड्रेड वन लाइनर क्वेश्चन हंड्रेड वन लाइनर क्वेश्चन विच आर मोस्ट लाइकली टू कम इन द एग्जाम प्लीज विद मी वॉश टी लैंड वॉश टी लैंड थैंक यू एंड ऑल्सो वंस अगेन रिक्वेस्ट टू ऑल ऑफ यू प्लीज लाइक सब्सक्राइब एंड शेयर दिस चैनल प्लीज सब्सक्राइब दिस चैनल लाइक द वीडियो एंड शेयर द वीडियो ऑल्सो थैंक यू सो वंस अगेन रिपीटिंग today special for gib paper 3 paper 3 is l r a b legal and regulatory aspects of banking our topic is model c and d part 2 one liner question very important one liner question 100 question we will do today so once again please like share and subscribe the channel thank you so let's start not wasting much time thank you so question number 1 question number 1 is What is the date of enactment of Bankers Books Evidence Act? When Bankers Books Evidence Act was passed, answer is one eight nine one means eighteen hundred ninety one. So when Bankers Books Evidence Act was passed, that is eighteen ninety one. Thank you. Question number two. in which section of the act bankers books are defined in which section of the bankers books evident act 1891 bankers books are defined means what which are banker books ledgers maybe maybe day book etc so this is defined in section 2 in section 2 bankers books are defined under Bankers Books Evidence Act. So, question number two answer is section two. This is one. This is two. Now, question number three. Which section of the above act specifies certain matters which require the production of original entry of proper investigation as mode of proof? So, what is this? Under section, under which section of the act means Bankers Books Evidence Act? Under which section? banks are required to produce the original entry for proper investigation as a mode of proof bankers evidence act ke under kaun si books hain kaun si entries hain jo ki bank ko provide karni hai as a proof aur wo kis section ke under hai answer is section 4 so question is 3 which section of the above act specify certain matters which require the production of original entry from proper investigation as mode of proof that is section 4 okay thank you so question number 4 under which section of the above act the officer of the bank should not come should not be compelled to either produce bankers books or appear as witness for proving matters transaction and accounts recorded किस सेक्शन के अंडर ऑफ बैंकर्स बुक्स एविडेंस बैंक इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड बैंक को रिक्वायरमेंट नहीं है कि वो अपने जो बुक्स हैं या जनरल लेजर हैं या एंट्रीज हैं वो प्रोड्यूस करें फॉर एविडेंस दैट इज आंसर इज सेक्शन फाइव देयर आर सर्टेन एंट्रीज और बुक्स विच बैंक डोंट वॉन्ट टू शो विच में बी देर सीक्रेट ऑफ द बैंक so court cannot compel under section 5 of bankers books evidence to produce those books or entries so question number 4 comes in question number 4 says under which section under which section of the above act the officer of the bank should not be compelled to either produce banker books or appear as a witness for proving matters transaction and accounts recorded so this is under section 5 section 5 says bank need not produce goods 
produce books under certain circumstances. So question 1, 2, 3, 4. Now coming to the question number 5. This is another important question. Which section provides the provision of inspection of books by the order of court or the judge? Under Bankers Evidence Act, which section provides the court to inspect the books of the providing the inspection of the books by the order of court? Which section provides the provision of section inspection of books by the order of the court or the judge? Bankers Evidence Act ke kis section ke under court courts bank ki books ko inspect karne ke liye order de sakta hai that is section 61 answer is section 61 section 61 so which section provides the provision of inspection of books by the order of court of the judge section 61 question number 6 which section of the act after amendment includes records stored in microfilm magnetic tape or any other form of mechanical or electronic data retrieval mechanism means as the digital banking has come in the force rapidly so bankers evidence act has been amended to include records stored in microfilm magnetic tape and any other form of mechanical or electron data for retrieval of the entries so what is the section under which section section 223 section 23 of bank arrangements has been amended to kaun sa section hai jiske under jo amendment hui hai jo ki record hai wo jo electronic form mein hai ya microfilm form mein hai magnetic tape form mein hai usko add kiya gaya include kiya gaya hai in the definition of bankers books banker books ki definition mein ye add kiya gaya hai kaun si section ke under section 2 public 3 of the bankers evidence act okay question number 7 due to which act amendment under section 2 3 was necessitated kis act ke under jo ye hum section 2 3 deal kar, discuss kar rahe the ki micro film in magnetic tape hona chahiye to Due to which act amendment under section 23 was necessitated? Kyun churur padi amendment in the section 23? Answer is the Information and Technology Act. Due to the enactment of Information and Technology Act, section 23 of the Bankers Evidence Act was amended to include microfilm, my magnetic tape, or any other form of mechanical or electronic data for retrieval mechanism okay right question number eight what is section 65b of indian evidence act 9 1817 this is very important what is section 65 of indian evidence act 1817 not bankers evidence act indian act not to be confused with bankers evidence act 19 what is section 65 of indian evidence so this is a 65 says any information contained in electric record which is printed on paper, stored, recorded or copied in the optical or magnified media produced by the computer is deemed to be a document. So question is 8 say section 65 of Indian Evidence Act describes document as any information contained in an electron rod which is printed on paper, stored, recorded or copied in optical magnetic media produced by a computer is deemed to be a document. Okay, thank you. So question number 5, 6, 7, 8 we have done. Let's go to the question number 9. Thank you. This is important for uh, Lok Adalat also. Question number 9. When the Legal Services Authority Act was enacted, when was the Legal Services Authority Act was enacted? 1987. Legal Service Authority Act kab bana tha? 1987. Question number 10. What is NALSA? NALSA. What is NALSA under Legal Service Authority Act? What is the expansion form of NALSA? 
National Legal Services Authority. NALSA means National Legal Services Authority. Okay. Question number 11. Who is the patron in chief of NALSA? Or who is the chairman of the NALSA? He is called patron in chief of NALSA. National Legal Authority. Chief Justice of India. Chief Justice of India is the patron in chief of NALSA. Question number 12. What is the main function of NALSA? What is the main function of National Legal Service Authority which is called NALSA? It lays down policies and principles for making legal services available under the provisions of the Act. What is the main function of NALSA? To lay down policies and principles for recording legal service is available under the provision of the act okay question number 13 under what uh, under which act sorry under what act or which act sorry it was called it a which act lok adalat is constituted lok adalat are con constituted under which act they are enacted under the legal services act 1987 the legal services act 1887 so question number 13 under what act Lok Adal is constituted the Legal Services Authorities Act 1987. Question number 14. What is the maximum claim amount covered under Lok Adalat? What is the maximum amount covered under Lok Adalat? How much claim can be filed under Lok Adalat by banks or otherwise also? So maximum amount is 20 lakh. Previously it was 10 lakh. Now it is 20 lakhs. So the maximum claim that can be filed under Lok Adalat or the maximum amount of order award and a Lok Adalat can give is maximum 20 lakh. Previously it was 10 lakh. Previously it was 10 lakh. Okay. So we have done the question number 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Let's go to question number 15. Thank you. Important, very important. Eh? What is COPRA 1986? This is COPRA Act 1986. What is COPRA Act 1986? Okay. This was amended in 2019 also. This is called the Consumer Protection Act 1986. What is COPRA 1986? The Consumer Protection Act 1986. Question number 16. How many consumer redressal agencies are there in India? How many consumer redressal? Consumer redressal means agencies. How many consumer redressal agencies in India? Three. They are three. They are district form A, B, state commission and C, national commission. So they are three consumer redressal agencies where the consumer can go for their complaints district form state commission and national commission question number 18 these are important questions for jib paper 3 what is the minimum age of district form president what is the minimum age for district forum president kitni age hone chahiye kam se kam to be a president of district form 35 years. Answer is 35 years. Question number 19. What is the tenure of district forum president under COPRA 1986, Consumer Protection Act under? What is the tenure of district forum president? 5 years or 65 years, whichever is earlier. District forum president, president ki jo tenure hai, wo hai 5 saal or 65 jo pehle ho jayega okay so the what is the tenure of district forum president five years or 65 years whichever is earlier thank you so question number 20 very important these are the important questions what are the financial power of district president how much amount of compensation or claim he can give district forum what are the Financial power of district or president, it need power and ski financially up to 20 lakh of rupees as per COPRA 1986. There are two act of COPRA 
one is 1986 then it uh, 2019 so under copra 1986 the financial power of district forum president is up to 20 lakh and up to 1 crore as per copra 2019 under copra 2019 the power of district forum is 1 crore but under copra 1986 power is 20 lakh so copra 1986 mein district forum president ki jo financial power hai wo hai 20 lakh tak aur copra 2019 mein power hai 1 crore 1 crore tak so what are the financial power of district forum president up to 20 lakh as per copra 1986 and up to one crore as per copra 2019 okay thank you so what is the question we have done it so question number 15 16 sorry 15 16 17 18 19 and 20 thank you let's go to the next question number 21 this is important important what section 15 of copra act says section 15 of copra act kya kehta hai section 50 of act grants an appeal against the decision of district forum within 30 days of to state vision if a consumer is not satisfied with the decision of the district forum he can go to the state commission within 30 days 30 days of the order of the डिस्ट्रिक्ट फॉरम अगर कोई कंज्यूमर सेटिस्फाई नहीं है डिस्ट्रिक्ट फॉरम की ऑर्डर से तो वो अपील कर सकता है स्टेट कमीशन में विद इन तीस दिन के अंदर ऑफ रिसीविंग ऑफ द ऑर्डर ऑल्सो दी एपलेंट मस्ट हैव पेड फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द कंपनसेशन डिजाइडेड गेस्ट हिम और रुपीज ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड विच एवर इज इसके अलावा ही कैन गो टू द स्टेट कमीशन ओनली अगेंस्ट दी ऑर्डर ऑफ डिस्ट्रिक्ट फॉरम अगर उसको ही हेस्ट डिपॉजिट उसको फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द कंपनसेशन डिसाइडेड जो डिसीजन दिया गया उसके फिफ्टी परसेंट का डिसीजन दिया जाएगा अगर कोई अग्रीव्ड है और ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड विच एवल एस पच्चीस हजार कम से कम और मैक्सिमम फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द कंपनसेशन अवॉर्डेड बाई द कोपरा डिस्ट्रिक्ट फॉरम ओके इंपॉर्टेंट वन सेक्शन ट्वेंटी टू The minimum number of member in the state commission cannot be less than. What is the minimum number of members in the state commission? I am telling asking about the state commission. So minimum members two. Question number twenty three. What are the financial power of state commission president? We have discussed about the district forum before. Now what are the financial powers of state commission president? Above twenty five lakhs. But not exceeding 25 crore as per Copra 1986. So state commission's president power is financial power above 25 20 lakh, but less not exceeding 1 crore as per Copra 1986. Consumer Protection Act 1986 में जो financial power है वो है 20 lakh से ऊपर 1 crore से ज़्यादा नहीं. And above one crore but up to 10 crore as per copra 2019 lekin copra 2019 jo power hai state commission ki wo hai 1 crore but up to 10 crore 10 crore tak question number 24 the minimum number of members in national commission cannot be less than kitne kam se kam minimum number hone chahiye national commission mein of under copra act फोर एंड उसमें वन बिंग वुमेन चार होंगे लेकिन उसमें एक वीमेन भी होगी टोटल फोर विद वन वीमेन सो मिनिमम नंबर ऑफ मेंबर्स इन द नेशनल सॉरी सो व्हाट इज द मिनिमम मिनिमम नंबर ऑफ मेंबर्स इन द नेशनल कमीशन कैन नॉट बी लेस देन फोर एंड आउट ऑफ दैट वन हैज टू बी वुमेन सो Question number twenty-one we have done. Question number twenty-two we have done. Question number twenty-three we have done. Question twenty-four we have done. Now we'll go into question number twenty-five. Important question. This is important question. Twenty-five. 
25. Okay, let me check. Question number 25. Now we are coming to the what are the financial powers of na National Commission President? We are done for district, state. Now what is the power of National Commission? Above 1 crore in as per 1986 and above 10 crores as per COPRA 2019. Under Consumer Protection Act 1986, the power of National Commission is 1 crore and above. And in the case of 2019, above 10 crore. Question number 26. What are circuit branches? What are circuit branches? When the National Commission works outside the ordinary place of capital of India, these are called circuit branches. National Commission head office is in Delhi. So, if a National Commission goes out of the city, New Delhi, and conduct that um, <coughs> that uh, uh, adalat, so these are called circuit branches. These are called circuit branches. Question number 27. Who is Consumer Under Protection Act? Who is Protection Under COPRA Act? Who is consumer? Consumer is a, a person who buys any goods or services for a consideration. Consideration is must. If, has a, an, if a consumer has bought anything by paying something, so he will become a consumer under COPRA Act, COPRA Act, Consumer Protection Act. So, who is consumer under COPRA Act? A person who buys any goods or service for a consideration. No, question number 28. Who is not a consumer under COPRA Act? Who is not a consumer under COPRA Act? A person who obtains goods and services free of charge. B. Who obtains goods for resale or for any commercial purposes? Then C. Who avails services for any commercial purpose? And D. Who avails services under protect services? So who is not a consumer under contract? A person who obtains number one goods and services free of charge. B. Who obtains goods for resale or for any commercial purposes? C. Who avails services for any commercial purposes? And D. Who avails services under contract of service? So all these are not consumers. So we have got 25, 26, 27, 28. Now let's go to question number 29. Question number 29. What is capital gain tax? What is capital gain tax? Capital gain tax is levied on the sale of property or money received through an investment. When is, uh, a profit is made out of investment or sale of property, a tax is levied on that. That is called capital gain tax. So question number 29 says, what is a capital gain tax? Capital gains tax is levied on this sale of property on money received through an investment. Question number 30. What is corporate tax? What is corporate tax? The income tax paid by a company is defined as a corporate tax. Simply, corporate tax is a tax which is to be paid by the companies. Question number 31. What is the maximum penalty for not filing income tax return? If a person is not filing income tax return, what is the maximum penalty? Starting from 1000, what is the maximum? Maximum penalty is 10,000. What is the maximum penalty for not filing income tax done? 10,000. Question number 32. What is integrated goods and services tax? IGST. IGST. Not GST. What is IGST? What is integrated goods and services tax IGST? This is IGST is a tax levied on all interstate supplies all interstate supply one state to another of goods and services and will be governed by the igct act 
what is integrated goods and services act igst is a levied tax levied on all interstate supplies of goods and services and will be governed by the integrated goods and services act okay thank you so back to 29 here for 29 30 31 32 now we are coming to the very very important very very important we will be discussing now question number 30 is very important i'll say this is very important what is the procedure for possession under surface act 2002 surface act 2002 how the possession is taken and what are the section involved very important please listen it carefully so now first of all notice for possession when an account has become npa and borrower has defaulted and the bank or the financial institution or lending institution has decided to go for under surface so what first procedure will be to give a notice to the borrower defaulted borrower which will be of 60 days 60 day notice has to be given before taking possession of the secured asset secured asset means agar the property has been taken or some vehicle has been taken so whatever the assets which are secured so 60 day notice to be given that is given under section 132 of the surface act this is given under section 132 of the surface act okay then after that reply to section raised by the borrower generally when a notice given the borrower de- denies that ki i have to pay anything so if a reply has been sent if a if a letter has been received from the borrower during this 60 days that bank has to reply within 15 days so reply to reply to not section replies to i'll say uh, objections reply to objection raised by borrower reply to objections raised by borrower a reply has to be given by buyer it's a must must be given 15 days of the receipt of the letter from the borrower this is under section 133 of surface act 2002 and number 3 borrower can approach drt within if if a borrower has received the notice under section 132 of surface act he can approach to the drt debt recovery tribunal within 45 days of receipt of the notice from the bank this is important some little disturbance is there i'll wait for a second i'll wait for a second or so that is you this is because this is very very important so let let, let my boss come proper okay so question c borrower can approach drt within 45 days of the receipt of the possession notice from the bank this is under section 17 very important this section is very important borrower can approach drt within 45 days of receipt of possession notice from bank this is under section 14 after that when everything has been done 60 days has passed and borrower has not got any relief from the drt drt says ko koi relief nahi mili then next is possession by secured creditor possession physical or symbolic by secured creditor this is secured creditor if 40 60 six days pass then under section 34 134 of surface act the lending institution which may be bank or financial institution can take possession of the secured asset that can be physical or symbolical just by posting a notice on the property if this property belong to the lending institution or bank now don't deal with it so that possession notice that possession has to be taken physical or symbolic that is to be under section 134 then another very important publication of possession notice in pure newspaper when a bank has taken possession of the property secured property then a notice has to be given to newspaper one vernacular 
within within how many days? Seven days under root A2 of surface A. Seven days means the date of possession is also included. So that means one plus six days. So seven days within seven days, a notice has to be given in the two newspaper. One out of them, one has to be vernacular. Okay. Then after that, when notice has been given, then another important thing. Then sale notice again has to be given before selling the property. Before selling the property, a notice of sale is to be given to the borrower that we are going to sell your property, pay the remaining amount, outstanding amount, otherwise we will sell your property. So this is very important. This is uh, notice of sale is to be given to the borrower. 30 days notice has to be given. Means 30 days notice has to be given to the borrower. Ki please pay within 30 days, otherwise we will sell you your property. So this is very important as far as the Surface C Act procedure is concerned. Okay, thank you. 33 we have done now. Now let's go to 34. Question number 34. Is it necessary to file charge with the Sarsai within 30 days for initiating action under Surface Act? The standard rule is whenever we have taken as a, we are going for a action under Surface C, then the security must be registered with the Sarsai within 30 days for initiating action under Surface C Act. Within 30 days, the security we have taken as a charge must be registered with the Sarsai within 30 days. But now, Section 32 of Surface C Act has been amended for removal of the timeline for 30 days. Now, Section 23 has been amended and there is no <coughs> compulsion key registration under SSI has to be done within a timeline of 30 days. So that removal of timeline has been amended. So th Section 35, this is important one. What is the new limit for NBC for that recovery under surface access is very, very important, very important. What is the new limit for NBFC for debt recovery under Surface Act? NBFC means what are the limit for NBFC? Non banking financial corporations, eh? non banking financial corporations. What has been, amendment has been made in Surface Means now, now. Rupees 100 crore asset size, previously 500 crore, and rupees 20 lakh loan size, previously 1 crore. It means the banks can approach DRT if the outstanding amount is 20 lakh or above. But NBFC cannot go to the, cannot go for Surface Act unless the minimum amount is 50 lakh now outstanding amount 50 lakh and their asset size is 100 crore now only then they can move to the surface against any borrower defaulting borrower minimum 50 lakh and asset size 100 crore previously it was 500 crore and 1 crore previously if the outstanding was to be minimum 1 crore and exercise 500 only then NBFC could go for the Surface Act. Now Act has been amended to give relief to the NBFCs. Now they can go for uh, under Surface if the outstanding is 50 lakh and asset size is 100 crore. Okay, thank you. Very important. 34 we have done. 35 we have done now. Let's go to 36. What is San Records endorsements? What is sand code? Sometimes a uh, check is endorsed with sand recourse. It means what is sand code in this endorsement? The endorser who is endorsing 
add the words without recourse to me means i will not be liable if there is any defect in the check it means endorser will not be liable even if it is not a valid check some defect is in the check if a endorsement is done by anybody ki bhai this is same because of both ki i will not be responsible if there is any defect in the check or check is not in order otherwise okay question number 37 what is facultative endorsement this is important in this an endorser waives the condition of notice of dishonor in facultative endorsement endorser waives the condition of notice of dishonor what the negotiable act says whenever there is dishonor of any check a notice has to be given to the drawer to make the payment within 15 days otherwise will go to the court for recovery of the amount but in case of facultative endorsement endorsers says in no problem you need not give me the notice he, my check has been dishonored you can straight away go for the complaint or for for the recovery of the amount in the court so facultative endorsement say in this an endorser waives the condition of notice of dishonor now question number 38 which section of negotiable instrument act deals with general crossing which section of negotiable instrument act deals with general crossing section 123 section 123 deals with the general crossing question number 39 which section of negotiable act deals with special crossing section 24 general crossing section 123 special crossing 124 and this is important very important which section deals with dishonor of checks if a check is dishonored which section of negotiable instrument act applies section 130 main then 143 and 148 143 and 48 recently amended recently amended so this is very important so we have done 36 37 38 39 and 40 40 which is very important which section deal with the dishonor of checks section 138 143 148 thank you let's go to the question number 41 important question important question question number 41 within how much time drawer of check to make payment to consider no offense suppose in the when a check has been dishonored and notice of notice within 30 days of the receipt of the memo from bank has been given to the drawer within how many days he has to make payment to the payee so that it doesn't become a offense matlab ye hai ki section 138 mein agar koi check dishonor ho gaya hai और 30 दिन के अंदर जब बैंक से उस पे को डिसऑनर का मीमो मिल गया है तो कितने दिन के अंदर ड्रॉर को पेमेंट करनी है कि कोई ऑफेंस ना बने अदरवाइज कोर्ट में जा सकता है पे आंसर इज 15 डेज ऑफ रिसीट ऑफ नोटिस व्हेन ए नोटिस हैज बीन गिवन टू द ड्रॉर बाय द पे टू मेक द पेमेंट of the dishonored check then drawer has to make the payment within 13 days so that no offense will be under section 138 otherwise the pay can go to the court for recovery of the amount section 42 if drawer fail to make payment then the pay can file criminal complaint within if supposingly within 15 days the drawer has not made the payment then within how many days the pay can go to the can file a criminal complaint that is 30 days of notice by drawer under section 138 of negotiable instrument act agar drawer ne payment nahi ki notice dene ke baad bhi 15 din ka time ke baad 
कितने दिन के अंदर जो पे है वो क्रिमिनल केस कर सकता है अंडर सेक्शन 138 इंस्ट्रूमेंट एक्ट कितने दिन में 30 डेज 30 दिन के अंदर और नोटिस पर और अंडर सेक्शन 38 जो 30 दिन का नोटिस दिया है 30 दिन खत्म हो जाएंगे देन पे कैन गो टू द कोर्ट फॉर रिकवरी ऑफ द अमाउंट दे कैन फाइल अ क्रिमिनल कंप्लेंट दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सेक्शन 41 42 and now we are coming to section 43 another very important how much is interim compensation during pendency of proceeding for offence of dishonor under section 138 a check has been dishonored and a complaint has been filed with the court by the pay so generally what happens the case is taken long time so how much court can grant interim compensation to the pay in case of dishonor of check answer is an amount not exceeding 20% of the value of instrument that means if the check is of 1 lakh then court can grant 20000 as a compensation under section 143 of the negotiable instrument act to the pay okay then question number 44 in quote documents in quote what are in quote documents in quote doc instrument under section 24 of negotiable means incomplete instrument instrument which are incomplete maybe date is not there pay no, name is not there or some in, some in, incomplete the instrument is there so they are called in a, in quote document under section 20 of negotiable instrument act thank you So we have done 41, 42, 43, 44. Now we we'll are coming to the question number 45. Thank you. Very important. This is very very important. Section 45. What is garnishment order? What is garnishment? This is an order by the court to attach money or goods belonging to the judgment debtor held with the bank. Garnishment order is issued by the court to direct the bank to attach the properties or money lying with the bank judgment debtor is a customer of the bank held with the bank so a garnishment order is an order by the court to attach money or goods belonging to judgment debtor held with the bank so any money <coughs> lying with the bank of the customer against whom garnishment order has been issued the bank will attach the property here one important thing is joint account cannot be attached joint account cannot be attached number 2 little bit disturb us give me a second because this is important i want to discuss it so what is the garnish order i'll discuss with it okay this is very important so section 45 question of 45 what is garnishment order an order by court to attach money or goods belonging to the judgment debtor with the bank in this case number 1 joint account cannot be attached cannot be attached in case no amount is written ki how much to be attached then full amount is to be attached okay this is very important section a garnishment order is an order issued by court under provisions of section 21 rule 46 of civil procedure act 1908 garnishment order is issued by a court under provision of order 21 rule 46 of civil procedure of 1908 this is important question who is garnishment in banking who is garnishment bank is always garnishment bank is always garnishment 48 what is order nisi before answering i'll tell you the court issued two notices the first is called order nisi this is as per rule 46 a a notice issued by the court to a garnishee garnish means bank court issue a note uh, issue or order to the garnishee generally the bank and order the bank the stop operation payment out of the funds of judgment debtor judgment debtor is 
bank customer generally ordinary is the first order issued by under section 46 by the court to garnish who is a bank pre stop the operation in the account and don't make any payment out of the um, uh, of the account of the judgment debtor without asking the court so this is order number 1 after that what is order absolute supposingly if a banker has objection to pay the funds held in the account of judgment debtor he must appear in the court and explain the reason why funds held in the account cannot be paid if a banker has an objection to the funds held in the account of judgment debtor he must appear in the court and explain the reason why funds held in the account cannot be paid अब बैंक के पास राइट है वो कहता है कि नहीं हमें लगता है कि हम नहीं पे कर रहे हैं क्योंकि हमारा ये पोजीशन है हमारा डेबिट है या हमारा लॉन्ग टर्म इसने पेमेंट करनी है देन कोर्ट इशूज द फाइनल ऑर्डर कॉल्ड ऑर्डर एब्सोल्यूट आफ्टर हियरिंग द एक्सप्लेनेशन फ्रॉम द बैंक कोर्ट बैंक को सुनने के बाद उसकी आर्गुमेंट सुनने के बाद ये डिसाइड करता है कि क्या ये then he issue a final order to the bank to attach the property or not to attach the property that is called ab order absolute so we have done 45 46 47 48 49 now we came to the question of 15 important question 15 how many grace days and on which basis they are allowed under negotiable instrument act how many grace days are given for payment and on which they are allowed so 3 days grace period is given only on users bill users bill means which are payable after a few days so how many grace days and on which bills are they are allowed they are allowed 3 days grace on users bill users bill payable after some time supposingly the date of the bill is supposingly let it be you can say it uh, 21 and payable after 3 months so 3 months notice 3 months 3 days will be given in this case as a grace period but if the date of bill is 261 and payable immediately then no grace payment will be given so grace period is given only on users bill and the 3 days is given 51 a government bill is any bill issued by the government is non negotiable is non negotiable very important question it has come so many time a government bill if a bill is issued by the government this is not negotiable another important what is a clause bill of lading bill of lading is a just like a transport document like gr rr good seat delivery seat what is clause bill of lading a bill of lading that indicates defective condition of the bill goods if any bill has been issued with a written clause bill lading, then that is called the bill of lading indicates there are defective documents in the defective condition of the goods then 53 the law of limitation was enacted in 1963 the law of limitation act was enacted in 1963 54 very important is the date of document excluded when calculating expiry dates yes supposingly documents executed on 26 21 so date of expiry shall start from 22 not 21 this date is excluded okay so question number 54 says is the date of document is excluded when calculating expiring period yes so date of the document is excluded while calculating the expiring period question number 55 there is little bit disturbance sometime so please bear with me Uh, section 55 dp note dated 10 12 1999 will expire on 10 12 22 not 9 12 22 means 
if a date of DP means provisory note, demand provisory note, whose validity is three years, whose date of expiry is three years. So uh, issued on 10, 12, 19. So it will not expire on 9, 12, 22. It will expire on 10, 12. Means this day will be excluded. This day will be excluded on the day of document will be excluded. So we have done 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. Let's go to the next. What is the expiry period of the document against overdraft cash credit mutual accounts will expire on any documents taken against overdraft cash credit mutual account will expire on three years after the close of financial year in which last transaction was made in the account excluding bank charges very important three years after close of financial year in which last transaction was made supposingly last transaction was made on 21-6-22 then up, the documents will expire from 1st April 2022 to 31st March 2025 not from 21-6-22 not from 126.2. This will, sorry, this will uh, start from 1422 after the expiry of the financial year. In the case of overdraft cash credit, mutual fund account will expire on three years after the close of financial year in which the last transaction made, excluding interest, etc. Document expiry date in mortgage loan is 12 years. Question number 15. When guarantee bond expire? When guarantee bond expire, three years after notice of default sent to the grantor. Supposingly, documents are date of 21. As a rule, the documents will expire on 21, 6, to, sorry, 24. But the notice for default has been given to the, the uh, grantor on maybe 21. 921. So then guarantee will expire on 21 24, not 21 26 4. So three years after notice of default has been sent to the grantor. 59. When documents under pledge lien set of expire. Very important, very important. When what is the validity of documents under pledge lien set of expire? There is no limit. No limit. They never expire. Documents under pledge, lien, set off, never expire. So we have done 56, 57, 58, 59. Let's go to the question number 60. Important one. Can a convict sign document during imprisonment? Kya koi convict hai, carry hai? Wo jab jail mein hai, toh document sign kar sakta hai? No, he cannot. But can sign during parole. A convict. Can a convict sign document during imprisonment? No. But can sign during parole? Parole ke time pe he can sign, but uh, he cannot sign in imprisonment. So question is, can a convict sign document during imprisonment? No. But can sign during parole? Question number 61. Expiry date of documents of mortgage, possession of immobile property. If the immobile property has been taken in possession, then liquidation is 30 years when mortgage becomes entitled to possession. Agar mortgage hai, immobile property ki possession ki hai, and the date of possession is maybe 21, 21, then the expiry date will be 30 years from this period. 30 years from the date of entitlement of possession. Question number 262. When a missing person is presumed dead, if a person has gone missing, then when he will be declared dead so that so that a succession certificate can be issued then. 
a missing person is presumed dead if he is not found within seven years from the date of report to the police. अगर सात साल तक पुलिस रिपोर्ट देने के बाद नहीं ढूंढ पाई उसको देन ई विल बी प्रज्यूम्ड एज डेट सो वेन ए मिसिंग पर्सन प्रज्यूम्ड एट एज डेट ए पर्सन मिसिंग पर्सन प्रज्यूम्ड एज डेट इफ इज नॉट फाउंड विद इन सेवन ईयर्स फ्रॉम द डेट ऑफ रिपोर्ट ऑफ द पुलिस क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटी थ्री द पेमेंट ऑफ एंड सेटलमेंट एक्ट वॉज इनेक्टेड इन टू थाउजेंड सेवन द पेमेंट एंड सेटलमेंट एक्ट वॉज इनेक्टेड इन टू थाउजेंड सेवन सो वेट ऑन सिक्सटी One, two, three. Let's go to the very important question. Sixty-four. A bill drawn in Delhi, issued in favor of a trader in Iran, and payable in Madras, will be called. This is called an inland bill. If a bill is issued in India, payable in India, but payable in india that will call inland bill basically condition is any bill which is payable in india may be issued in favor of anybody in any country that will be called your inland bill but in case if a bill is supposingly another question take if a bill is drawn in favor of a trader in iran and payable in iran then it will become a <coughs> foreign bill but if it is payable in india any bill drawn in india payable in india That will be called the inland. Now come to sixty-five. Clear about it? Question number sixty-five. Just read it. Just read it because there is some disturbance. A check has already been negotiated by X and X to Y. Yes. A check has been. Question number sixty-five. A check has already been negotiated by X to Y. And by Y to Z. How many times more this instrument can be negotiated? How many times? There is no limit. A bill can be negotiated. A check can be negotiated. Sorry, negotiated by any time or endorsed any time. There is no limit. Question number sixty-six. A check of rupees five thousand is issued on March twenty-one, but it is dated as February twenty-one. It is presented for payment on March. 21 can such check be paid yes this is anti dated check this can be paid because although check is dated 22 28 paid on march 22 this is within the period of 3 months so this check is payable but this is called anti dated check can be paid so we have done 64 65 66 question number 67 Indian Contract Act was enacted in 1872. When Indian Contract Act was enacted, May 1872. Question number 68. Which section defines agreement? Under which section of Contract Act agreement is defined? Section 2E. Section 2E of Indian Contract Act agreement is defined. Section. Question number 69. What is contract? What is contract? Section 2H important says contract as an agreement enforceable by law. A and B has made and has come into agreement to buy goods for one lakh. So this is a contract. This is this is a contract because this is enforceable law. But A and B entered into contract. For wagering, or for lottery, then this uh, this is will not be called a contract. So what is contract? A contract is an agreement enforceable law. Important to be seen. An agreement cannot turn into a contract unless it is enforceable by law. So agreement is equal to agreement for enforceable law is called contract. Okay. Question number seventy. Which section of Contract Act enumerated certain condition of a valid contract? What are the essentials of a valid contract? What are the essential? Or what are the features of a valid contract? Under which section of the Act? Section ten of the Act defines the condition for a valid contract. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवेंटी वन वॉट आर वाइड कॉन्ट्रैक्ट और एग्रीमेंट वाइड ए कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विच इज नॉट एनफोर्सेबल बाई लॉ बिकम्स वाइड कोई भी एक्ट जो कि एनफोर्स ही नहीं हो सकता कोर्ट में दैट इज वाइड मीन अगर कोई अगर कोई कॉन्ट्रैक्ट हो रहा है फॉर सेल ऑफ वेपन और स्मगलिंग गुड्स सो दे आर ऑल वाइड एग्रीमेंट दे कैन नॉट बी एनफोर्स बाय लॉ सो दे आर ऑल वाइड कॉन्ट्रैक्ट सो वट आर क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवेंटी वन सीज वट इज वाइड कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एग्रीमेंट एंड कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विच इज नॉट एनफोर्सेबल बाई लॉ बिकम्स वाइड so we have done question number 67 68 69 70 and 71 okay let's go to the next this is important important what is voidable contract an agreement which is enforceable by law at the option of one or more parties there to but not ap- at the option of others is voidable contract under section 2i what is voidable contract an agreement which is enforceable by law at the option of one or more of the parties there to but not at the option of other parties is voidable contract this is under section 2 a and b enter into agreement with a, with a says i will sell my house to b for 20 lakh okay but with a condition but with a condition that i have the option to withdraw this contract any time he says i can withdraw i can refuse to sell you the property any time but we cannot we cannot but we has to purchase that if a is ready means one party condition is there not other party a says ki i'll sell you the my house for 20 lakh but at any time i can cancel this contract but b cannot con- cancel the contract he has to buy it or pay the penalty so this is called your voidable contract section 27 question the primary liability in indemnity lies on the indemnifier while in guarantee it lies on the principal debtor in the case of indemnity if a indemnity bond has been issued by a to b for supply of goods and he is not able to do that then in case of indemnity the primary liability is that of indemnifier who has given the indemnity while in the guarantee it lies on the principal debtor principal debtor on whose behalf the guarantee has been issued question number 74 what contracts are similar to the contracts of indemnity this is insurance contract all insurance contracts are just like indemnity contract because the insurance company indemnify the insured if any mis happening has been done so what contracts are similar to contracts of indemnity insurance question number 75 what is bailment this is important what is bailment bailment is a delivery of goods from one person to another for a special purpose on the contract that they shall return the same goods on the fulfillment of the purpose or dispose of the as per the direction of the bailer this is section 148 of contract act very important what is bailment under bailment is the delivery of supposing a deliver goods to the b b then after the some with some condition after the condition is fulfilled b is is required to return the goods to the a the same goods the same goods just like you can say same goods uh, to done to a or if b says ki please dispose of that on that agreement then a can sell it a can dispose that otherwise a is a bailer b is the bailee so a has de- delivered the goods to b to keep it for some time with some condition and after that return to the a in the same same goods in same condition so this is called your bailment under section 48 148 
of inductive effect. So 72, 73, 74, 75 we have done. Now come 77, it has come 77. Is the money deposited in the bank bailment? Bailment say delivery of the goods from one person to another to be delivered back on the completion of the contract. Same goods and but is the money deposited in the bank bailment? It shall not be amount of bailment as the money returned by the bank would not be the same identical notes. Supposingly, 1 lakh has been given in the notes of 200, 500 and 600. Bank can return the same but not the same notes. He, the bank can give 200, 500 notes but not the same note which they have given. So, in that case, is the money deposited bank in bailment? No, it shall not be account of bailment as the money returned by the bank would not be the same as identical notes. Question number 78. This is duties of the bailer are defined in which section? Duties section 50, 150 of the Indian contractor. So, who is bailer? Bailer who delivers the goods. Who is the owner and delivers the goods and Bailey who receives the goods, who receives the goods. Okay. So what is gratuitous bailment? This is important. What is gratuitous? What is gratuitous bailment? It is the duty of the bailer to disclose all the defects of the good that he is aware of to the Bailey that can interfere with the use of goods or can expose him to extraordinary risk. Gratuitous bailment. It is the duty of bailer who is delivering the goods to tell the bailey that there are certain defects of, in the goods and use that with precaution. Use that with precaution so that there is no risk to his life. So this is called your gratuitous payment. Payment. Then duty of the bailey. What are the duties of bailey? Question can come on section 150. What is the under section which duties of bailey are given? Section 151 of, of the act provides that in all cases of bailment, the bailee is bound to take as much care of goods bailed to him as its own. What the duties of bailee say? Ki section 151 kata hai ki agar bailee hai, us jo goods usne bailer ne diye usko rakhne ke liye, usko is tarah use kare, uski care is tarah rakhe, jaysa wo uski apni hai. So what the duties of bailee is? Section 151 acts provides that in all cases of bailment, the bailey is bound to take as much care of the goods bailed to him as he takes his own. Section 181. Is pledge in bailment very important? This question is very important. Is pledge bailment? Is pledge is bailment? Pledge is a kind of bailment. It's not basically a bailment because in the bailment, there is no consideration error. Consideration may or may not be there, but pledge is a kind of bailment. By pledge, although the goods are delivered, goods are delivered by the bailer to bailey, but that is not a bailment because by pledge, it is meant bailment of goods as a security for repayment of debt or loan advance because there is consideration here. Here yeah, there is consideration, the repayment of debt and loan is given. That's why it's a kind of bail bailment. So, question number 82. In which section of Indian Contract Act pledge is defined? Section 83. Section 83 defines pledge. Section 83. Question number 83. Who is the pawner and the pawnee? The person who pledges the goods as security is known as pledger. So A and B. A delivers the goods to B under pledge. B is bank. So, A is called pledger or pawner, pledger or pawner and the person in whose favor the goods are pledged is known as pledgy and pawnee. Question number 84. Is consideration necessary in bailment? No, consideration not necessary, but in case of pledge, consideration is necessary. That's why it is, pledge is also called a kind of bailment. Bailment may कोई consideration जरूरी नहीं है. Consideration means कोई पैसा देना या कोई condition लगाना जरूरी नहीं है. लेकिन in case of pledge, consideration is necessary. That's why it's called a kind of pledge. 85. 
who is the finder of lost goods this is a important question who is the finder of lost goods section 71 of indian contractors defines who is the finder of lost goods the finder of lost goods means a person who come across the goods that are unclaimed or whose actual owner is not known suppose in the raste mein kisi ko kuch goods mil jate hain koi purse mil jata hai so he is called the finder of goods finder of the lost goods usko nahi pata hai kiske hain unclaimed hain aur us actual owner kon hai so finder of lost goods defined under section 71 of the indian contract 1872 then question number 86 who is the principal in agency contract agency contract a person who employs another person to perform an act and who is being represented by another person in dealing with a third party is a principal principal and agent we understand who is principal and principal person who against someone to perform on his behalf principal ho hai to koi kisi ko कर लेता है कि वो उसके बिहार पे काम कर रहे हैं कोई गुड सेल करे तो उसे कहते हैं प्रिंसिपल तो हु इज प्रिंसिपल प्रिंसिपल हु इज प्रिंसिपल प्रिंसिपल एनी पर्सन एनी पर्सन हु एम्प्लॉयज अनदर पर्सन टू परफॉर्म एन एक्ट एंड हु इज बीइंग रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय अनदर पर्सन इन डीलिंग विद अ थर्ड पार्टी इज प्रिंसिपल so we have done 82 83 84 85 86 now we'll go to the next sorry 82 83 84 85 86 now we come to the 87 is legal consideration necessary agency contract no need just like uh, in the case of uh, bailment no consideration is necessary in agency also no consideration is necessary 88 what is agency by estoppel very important agency by estoppel means it is an agency where the agent will be precluded or refrained from refusing his authority as an being an agent means if a principal has employed a person to work on his behalf and agent has done something wrong illegal and later on he says i am not his agent he say I, uh, he is using his authority as being an agent then that is called agency by estoppel here the agent is refrained from saying ki i am not his uh, agent of the principal this is called your what is agency by estoppel is wife an agent of husband when a legally married couple lives together the wife is supposed to have the authority of his husband to pledge his credit in order to afford the basic necessities of life with some exception agent is uh, wife is agent if he is buying anything for the basic necessities of life and they are living together question number 19 what is agency by necessity agency by necessity important this describe the relationship during extraordinary or emergency circumstances in which an agent acts on behalf of a principal without receiving authorization from the principal this is an emergency situation when an agent has to take a decision and the principal is not available without the permission of principal but this is very necessary then that act is binding on the principal so it is done sorry it is done to prevent harm to the principal and that agent must continue to act in the best interest of the principal kabhi emergency mein agent ko koi decision lena padta hai for the benefits of the principal aur us samay principal available nahi hai uska jo malik available nahi hai to agar usne wo decision liya hai for that principal is liable so we have done 87 88 89 90 let's go to the 91 question number 91 sale of goods act incorporated in 1930 when sale of goods act was enacted 1930 kab bana tha sales of goods act 1930 92 what are existing goods section 60 say 
there are different type of goods existing goods unassertain goods future goods so what are existing goods these are the goods that are referred to in the contract of sale are termed as existing good if they are present at the time of contract supposingly a says i will send you 100 chairs 100 chairs which are ready which you can see then this is called your existing goods ye goods hain already hain ye if usi pe sale ka term pe condition pe hua to only those goods has to be sold so what are existing goods the goods that are referred to the in the contract of sale are termed as existing goods if they are present in existence at the time of contract jab contract ho raha hai us samay wo jo goods exist karte hain to use karte hain existing goods then what is what are uncertain goods second waiting to read these are the goods that have not been specifically identified but have rather been left to this selected to a from a larger group suppose there are so many chairs are lying 100 of chairs are lying 100 of chairs are lying and a contract is made by the a and b a is the owner of the goods ki bhai and b say i need 25 chairs then what a says okay i have these 100 chairs you can take any one any 25 so these are uncertain the goods are not certain which goods are good or which are not so this is what is called your uncertain good or like there are so many boxes of sugar or tea and not a certain not a certain ki how much is there in maybe some 10 grams less or 20 grams more so this is all uncertain good so the, so this is called your uncertain goods under section 1823 question 94 what is constructive delivery constructive delivery important question constructive delivery is the transfer of goods can be done even when the transfer is affected without a change in the possession or custody of the goods supposedly a and b entered into contract supposedly a has to send some goods to the b when the goods are gone to the b b is not available there b is not available there and he is saying b is saying b give it to c so when a gives the goods to c this becomes a constructive delivery even if the delivery has not been given to the actual person so this is what is constructive transfer of goods can be done even when transfer is affected without a change in the possession of the customer goods if you pick up a parcel on a behalf of your friend and agree to hold it on for him it is constructive delivery supposingly a parcel a has sent a parcel to b and b is not available the b has and c has taken on behalf of b so this is a constructive delivery okay that's got the question number 91 we have done sorry 91 92 93 94 9 coming to the 95 number who is mercantile agent we are discussing here sales of goods act 1930 who is mercantile agent is someone who has authority in the customary course of business either to sell or consign goods under the contract on behalf of one or both of the parties this is basically a middleman mercantile agent person who has been given the authority in the normal course of business to sell or consign goods send goods on behalf of the one or two parties and what is agreement to sell this is important what is agreement to sell an agreement to sell can be defined as this transfer of property in goods that is to take place in future time or the transfer might take place depending on the fulfillment of certain condition this is section 43 says a has entered into contact with b to sell his house after 3 months agreement contact has been made today but delivery has to be made in after 3 months with a, with some certain condition ki this much amount is to be paid so this is called your agreement to sell that in agreement to sell transfer is done later on but agreement contract has been made with certain condition 
97. What is warranty? This is important. Warranty. Warranty is a stipulation collateral to the main purpose of the contract. A and B. A, is, A shopkeeper sold the fridge to B. Fridge to B. So this is the main contract. Warranty is collateral to this contract. Collateral to the contract. The shopkeeper gave guarantee that if there is any defect in the fridge I sold, I am giving you warranty for two years. Warranty for two years. During two years, I will repair your fridge or refrigerator, but not replace. Not replace. Replacement is not allowed in the warranty. That is a condition. That is in the condition only. In warranty, only repair is done. So what is warranty? Warranty is a stipulation collateral to the main person that the breach of which gives rise to a claim and damages, but not the right to reject the goods or treat the contract as repudiated or cancelled. Contract cancel nahi hoga. Rejection ho gai hai. But replacement nahi hogi. Damages can be there. Jaysa ki repair ho jayega. So this is what is called your warranty. You have done 95. Question number 95 has been done. 95, 96, 97. Now coming to the 98. This is important. What is warranty? as to undisturbed possession. Question number 98. Just a second, please. Some disturbance is there, so I want to give the answer properly. So question number 98. Question number 98. 98. What is warranty as to undisturbed possession? Undisturbed possession means this warranty means that the buyer should have and enjoy quiet possession of the goods after having gotten the possession of the goods. He should not be troubled at all. This is the warranty given. This means once you buy the goods, they should not be taken away from you. Means, if you have purchased it, you have given 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 it. That is in disturbed possession. Once you have taken the, uh, if, if a shopkeeper has sold goods to B, so he cannot take back possession. He cannot take back possession. Any, you take the money back. This is not done. Once taken, always taken. So question number 99. Question number 99. Who is unpaid seller? An unpaid seller is one to whom the whole of the price has not been paid or a bill of exchange or such other negotiable instrument given to him has been dishonored. Supposingly, <coughs> A has sold goods to B, maybe refrigerator, for 25,000. B paid 10,000 and remaining, he has given a check. Check or bill to be paid after some time. And this check is dishonored. So, A is unpaid seller to the amount of 15,000 means 10,000 already given out of 25. So, for 15,000, a shopkeeper will be unpaid seller for 15,000. 100. What is doctrine of AV and tempter means? This is very important. Sorry. What is doctrine of KV and tempter means? It means buyer should be aware of all aspects of buying. It means when a buyer is buying the any good, he should be totally aware what is buying, what could be the, the maximum price here, whether charging low or high. So after that, no <coughs> condition will be there. He has once he has bought, he is liable for that. He has to, to make the payment, and everything is okay. But it doesn't mean the seller will be free. Seller cannot be free. But if there are inherent defects which cannot be seen with the naked eyes, then seller is responsible. So, 100 number question, very important. Doctrine of capital means buyer should be aware of all aspects of buying. So, we have done 98, 99, 100, we have done 98, 99, 100. So, these were the 100 questions. So, thank you very much for watching. So, please like, subscribe and share the video. I request everyone, please like, Subscribe and share the video.
and watch the land. Watch the land. Thanks from Bengal Zone Arena. Once again, welcome and uh, thanks to all of you from Rastidhar Chopra from Bengal Zone. Thank you very much. Uh, tomorrow again, we'll be coming with a new video, which will be very important for GIB, LRAB, Paper 3. Thank you very much. Thank you.